Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. I'm here today with my man, Micah. Now listen, this guy's making auto dealerships a ton of money. This guy's crushing it and killing it. And once you learn the secret, how he's doing it in this video, if you're a manager, a general manager, you want to take this straight to the owner immediately. If you're a sales pro, take this to your owner. You got a bonus tomorrow. Check this out. I just want to stay bad, stay mad shit by my shoulder because they treat me like an outcast. I ain't gonna take that stay back. I'll be swinging. All right, guys. So, in this video today, what we're gonna talk to you about is my man, Micah. Number one, he owns a company called Auto. Now, listen, Auto right now is just sweeping through the nation. I mean, you guys are currently in Arizona, Utah. You're in a lot. Is it Midwest? Is it upper Midwest states? Mostly Midwest. And as we're expanding east. Yeah, you guys so. are going nationwide. I see you guys spreading out. But right now in that area, you guys are dominating. It's probably because you're from Utah, right? That is correct. So, yeah. you started there. You're branching out. But if you're an auto dealer, I want you to understand something. Okay. Times have changed. People have changed. Things have changed. It was really easy a couple years ago. I feel like a lot of companies right now are struggling, not only in back end, not only in back end money, also in front end money. And everybody's running around. It's, it's, it's chaos. Everybody's blaming it on each other. And it's honestly turned into a show. Now, listen, there are a couple people and I have a lot of, I love the transportation space. Guys, everybody watching this right now. I, I know I, I teach sales in all industries, but I love the transportation space. I love the automotive space. And what Micah is doing with his team for auto dealers is insane. He's making them free money, more money, easy money, which is why a dealer opens a business. Okay, they, they love their customers. They love their employees. They love their team. But it's also a profitable business, okay? You guys get paid money. Everybody wants to make money. But we want to run a great profitable business where everybody wins. This is the most amazing thing ever. So number one, I, before we get into what, what it is, and by the way, if you're watching this, if you're a salesperson, if you're a manager, if you're a general manager, you need to stay tuned in. When I was younger, I shared an idea from watching a message. I wasn't the owner. I shared an idea as a salesperson with the owner and I got promoted. I got a big bonus. He flew me out on a private jet and all this stuff just for sharing an idea that made him a lot more money. People love it whenever you have their back and you're not only just looking out for yourself. So if you're watching this, I want you to watch the full video. I want you to understand everything that we're talking about, and then I want you to get this video to the right person in the right hands. And by the way, if you're an owner watching this, I'm going to give you a number here in a minute where you can text, and we'll give you all the information if you want to be a part of this. So, Micah, how old are you? How I mean, tell us a little bit about, did, did you own dealerships? Gosh, how old I am? Thanks, that question. I appreciate that. Okay, I'm younger than you. Just a little bit. Are you, are you 35? Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm 40, 41. I turned 42 real soon you just had a birthday too didn't you yeah 44 going on 18 fired up ready to <laughs> kill somebody um but but listen he's he's real methodical and how long did you own a dealership for uh i still own a dealership okay, i own two dealerships okay. i started in 2002 okay. so gosh you know 22 years now and that's really where auto came about is the major hole that happened at my dealership within it so give you a long story short it was basically so i own two dealerships they're little larger independents, not franchise. Is this for franchise and independents? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, it's for franchise and independents. So every every dealership would qualify for this. All yes. right, keep rolling. Absolutely. So what happened was is um, we were paying like a third-party warranty, and a claim got denied. My dealership had to pay for that claim. So the money's still coming out of my pocket, and we, we did the math. It's really easy to pull it up. It's like, okay, we paid this warranty company. It was almost $600,000 just in the last 12 months. And then they were denying a $5,000 claim. So then I asked them, okay, well, then how much money have you actually paid out in claims? Because the the claim they were denying was for a K&N air filter on a Ford F-350. I was like, how is that making it so that the engine's worse? And it just made me really mad because my customer, he was mad at me because I sold him a warranty that wasn't paying for things. And we had paid $53,000 total in the claims. So where'd the rest of the $450,000 go? You know, just in that year. And as we're going through it, then I get on reinsurance. Okay, now I can kind of control it. D math ended up the same way. Um, I didn't quite have the denial now, but when I look at my account, $600,000 goes in, $50,000 in claims. You'd think there should be right around $450,000 in an account. No, there was two hundred and fifty. dollars Well, now where'd the other $200,000 go? So after going through it, trying to figure out, okay, what's the best way? Uh, I started my own warranty company, nice. but I didn't really want to have my dealership's name on it or on the contract in case it was a, 
a valid denial on a claim. You know, I don't want them giving me a bad Google review. So um, started a, the company. Um, at the time, it was called First Secured Administrators, long name. But anyways, it kept building. And now we were able to take care of our customers, started a call center. Then really what took place was the software. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. And when the software came about, it was, I need it to look like this. I need it to integrate with this DMS system. I need to be able to see my claims. I need to be able to listen to how the claims team is taking care of my customers. I need to see the receipts, the validation, everything, mm -hmm. and how much is actually being paid out. And that's where it kept going. Then it created into, okay, well, this car has more risk, so it needs to be priced here. And this car has less risk, so it needs to be priced here. And then it was, oh, finance managers can sell a lot easier if it's this simple. And it just kept evolving. And then it's just grown like gangbusters because now that kind of example of the 450000 is what should be in your account. Yeah. It's actually more than that right. because now they have more control of their claims. Uh, the adjudication of the claims is all right around them. We have networks of shops. We have uh, discounted labor rates, discounted parts. And then we distribute their customer da database right back to their shop. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's really interesting on how it's, I mean, it's grown my business massively. Yeah, so it makes you a lot of cash. I want to ask everybody a question. You know, um, when we're talking about warranty companies, we're talking about reinsurance, we're talking all this stuff. Whoever your company, use, your dealership uses right now, um, how loyal are they are they to you? Just simple question. Okay, I know that you're, you know, building a business. If you're an owner, I know that dealerships right now want to be successful. They want to succeed. They want to make you see everybody get paid. They want to provide good customer service. But how loyal, right, is your warranty company? How loyal is the reinsurance company? How loyal are those people? Are those people ensuring that you're creating the cash flow that you need, that you're making money? Or did they get your business at one point in time and we haven't shopped them again? Because what I'm going to tell you is this, is that me and my wife, we literally picked up the phone and shopped our insurance the other day and we've been with them t 10 years and we learned that we were getting ripped off. Okay, so sometimes, sometimes you need to reach out and you need to see what is available and don't be surprised when you get surprised okay because with auto every time that i've introduced them to a dealer they always switch now why would they always switch because a lot of people right now they're used to coming into the company getting their checks you know just being around when they need to you know maybe answering the phone when you call with the problem but they're not in there ensuring that 2024 is going to be the best year for you as a as a dealership Right now, while you're struggling on the front and the back end, trying to figure out why rates are high, you know, um, everybody's going back into a market price strategy at every company, you know, a race to the bottom again. Salespeople are weaker than they've ever been. Managers, you know, they used to make three times more than they're making now, and they're bitching and complaining and whining because, you know, they're not making as much as they used to be. But, you know, hell, it was them that was doing it all when really the market was three times better. You got all these things going on. But your company's not in there with you sitting down trying to figure out how to make you more money. If this isn't happening, I want to give you a number because I have this guy's cell phone and I'm going to give it out to you guys. And all you got to do is, is, is a simple text, okay, and say, I want more information. And Micah, you or someone for your team will really reach out and call them for five minutes and see or explain what you guys do. Let me give this number. I'm going to put it up on the screen too. It's 801-251-6605. Now, just shoot a text. I'm not even asking you to call. You just text Mike at 801-251-6605. And I want to tell you something. Since times have changed, things have changed, people have changed, you know, where are dealers going to find that extra money? I mean, are we going to settle and just say, hey, hey man, that market was good while it, while it lasted, but now we should go back to lower profits? Hell no. Can you buy great, can you make great deals on cars right now? No, the market's still up on cars. Look, is it a little lower than it used to be? Yeah, but the market's still up on, on cars. Buying them at the auction and trade-ins, they're still up. But now we're getting competitive on the pricing. So we're giving clients a little more money for the trade-ins. We're getting competitive on pricing. Rates are higher than they've been. And we've got a spoiled ass team in most cases that made more money in the last two years than they ever made and they didn't have to have any more skill. 
You know why I love you, Andy? Because you just described every single almost like selling point of why we're growing so fast. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about literally like, what like, you guys do. like what you're talking about is like you get on Auto Trader or Car Gurus and that little green icon that we all hate now that says great price or good price. Mm -hmm. And that's what all dealers are now having to look at. Or they get on V Auto and they're trying to get 95% of market or 90% of market. And all it is is, and, and we've talked about this, it's like, the reason why is we've got to get customers here somehow or another. Right. And most customers are looking at everything on their phone, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we, we text message. Mm -hmm. But that big, annoying green check mark that says great price drives down our profits. That's right. But you know what's never going to be advertised? It's the service contract cost. That's right. It's the stuff that's afterwards. That's right. But then let's say that you do sell a service contract. What I'm talking about is you say you sell a service contract for $3,000 and it costs, you know, $1,500, $2,000. So the F&I manager is happy that he made his $1,000 and 15% of that. Well, why aren't you keeping all $3,000? Right. Like, I mean, we know the statistics on the well, claims. But a lot of people are afraid of change. Yeah, exactly. Listen, Which is why you're growing so fast. Yes, uh, exactly. Look, it's evolve or die. Okay, I'm just going to let everybody know Evolve or Die. And by the way, I'm not telling you what to do because I know that people that own businesses or that run companies hate to be told what to do. But I'm going to ask you something, all right? Do you feel like you should be financially making more money? Just, it's a very simple question. I ask people that all the time. They say, well, absolutely. And I say, okay. Well, then we're going to need to research why we're not. And we're going to have to find the buckets of money that we don't see. Okay? And what you have to do is you have to have new conversations with new people. I tell people all the time, if you're around the same, you're some of the five people you hang out the most. And by the way, there, it's more than that. Why most people are the same for the next couple of years as they, well, number one, it was really good. And this market won't come back like it was. So now we're on our own for the next five years. The difference between whether now each year dwindles down from where you're at or goes up will depend on the people that you meet, the new knowledge that you learn, and the way that you research areas in your company to make sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck and that you have the best product in the marketplace. And you're dealing with somebody who's unique, who's rare, who's different, and who stands out. And that's what I love about y'all's company. I think because you own a store and I think because of the way you operate. By the way, testimonies don't lie. Right. My dealers, they always call me and they say, this guy has made us a lot more money. Thank you very much. And by the way, dealers choose me to train and to do their sales training and they love it. Dude, they pay two or $3,000 a month to have all their team train. As much value as I can give them back, this has nothing to do with the sales team. Your sales team can only do so much. Your finance manager can only do so much. Your manager can only do so much. This is just technology and a process and basically I'm going to call it a new partnership that you put in place with your current existing business already that just produces and make more makes more money with what you're already currently doing you're not asking anybody to change anything you're just increasing the cash the cash flow you're the exactly right is filling up with more cash on the same exact system you have now so really is there any change no but people say, well, my warranty company guy now, or the guy that we use now, or the people that we use now, we're loyal to them. We've been with them 13 years. Well, keep getting it stuck in your butt like I did at my insurance company, right? And I mean this. And then you call one day. By the way, what I love about you guys is when we get on this call, they're going to show you what, what you're doing now and what it would have looked like if you, wouldn't, if you would have used them. And when it's you so funny. I'm laughing because I had a dealer just like three days ago tell me the exact same thing. I really love my agent, love him to death. And I said, I'll tell you what, I will pay your agent. I'll give him $50,000 of your money and every year if you want to sign up. Because guess what? You're paying him right now $300,000. And I'll take the extra. Well, the deal is, is that, yeah. can I ask you a question? Is loyalty a two-way street? I mean, just because a manager was with you when you opened your company, if today he's not working anymore, he's a barstool warrior, he's sitting on his ass, he doesn't get up in TO deals, he doesn't call in approvals, he doesn't train the team, he doesn't motivate the team, he doesn't talk to customers, should we keep him because he was loyal since we started our company? No, loyalty is today, he is talking to every client, he's calling in deals, he's shaking hands and kissing babies. He's coming in with a great attitude. He's bringing the fire to the sales team and the company is growing and the needle is moving. That is loyalty. It's a two-way street. And I think right now, a lot of people, they become paralyzed with fear. And I want you to understand something. Early adopters 
with your auto program, save the most money. Oh, yeah. Early adopters. You need to understand this, okay? The dealers that I have that are using him because they get better deals early on before he explodes too big, right now they're racing in, and they love doing business with him. And by the way, it's a new, fresh look. When is the last time someone else, from his perspective, came in and looked at your business? I'm just going to ask you, or looked at the company's business and go, man, I see cash here, I see cash there, I see cash there. Do you want to stay the same, or do you want to collect this? Well, obviously say, well, I'd like to collect. Okay, cool. And by the way, when, when something's new, people start to prove themselves again. Sometimes it's good to change things out. There's a company of ours that we train, and the same manager that's been in charge, that's been in the owner's ear, ear for the last like eight years, was the one reason why the company was sinking. And I told the owner, I go, dude, your loyalty to him, your, can I say this, blind loyalty? Because you're blind. Your blind loyalty to that guy is costing you millions a year, minimum. They, they removed him, okay, put him in a different position. They didn't fire him. We don't need to fire anybody. We need to put him where he belongs, over here where we do nothing because he wants to do nothing. And then we brought someone in who wants to do something, who wants to be loyal, who wants to prove themselves, who wants to make more money. And now the store is thriving. They're kicking ass. They're, they're almost number one in the nation. How in the hell do you have this massive turn to this? Well, it's because you start researching. I would tell you, so as a salesman, as a manager, as a general manager, even as an owner, you guys need to text us 801-251-6605 and just ask Micah, say, hey, I want to test you. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And in five or 10 minutes, I'll be willing to bet you're like, you know what? All right, we need to make this a longer meeting. Let's get on a Zoom. Show me how this works. And you're going to be blown away. So well, Yeah, and, and I mean, just testing us, the, the funny thing is we have all the stats to prove it. We can right. sit there and see it. And then the, an can, can you be real specific and tell people exactly what you do? So if a dealer's watching this and he says, what, by the way, listen to me, not, not how much can you save us, not how much money can we make, but give them specifically, what is your wheelhouse? Okay. Perfect. So basically let's say, let's use an example that a finance manager sees every day. He has a service contract. He puts it into a computer system and it uh, puts the VIN number in, puts the miles in, it pops out a price, right? And the potential packages. And ours is very similar, except for it uses AI technology that says, this is the best, most sellable product for exactly that car. Mm -hmm. Then it prices it out, say it's $1,500. Our price analytics take all these things, everything into effect more than others, but that's a whole nother story. Then they sell it for $3,000. The finance manager's happy he made his 15% on 1500 right? Okay. For a dealer, they're either usually sending that money off, if they're on a reinsurance, to somewhere either offshore or somewhere where they don't have that $1,500 on a reinsurance example. Okay. For others, they're sending it to a third party. And that third party is obligated to pay those claims. And they're just keeping their spread of the 1500 And that's fine. Except for once you start to get into it and you start realizing, okay, how much do claims actually come out? When you put this big bulk of, let's say you're doing 50 warranties a month or even with our program, 15 to 20, okay. you make way more money. Okay. So let's say it's, it's 20 warranties a month at each $1,500. That's per month, okay? That's the, what we call the reserve, mm -hmm. okay? So that wholesale cost, that dealer's now putting into his own account, paying the claims from that account. And at the end of the day, he usually keeps about 75% of that money. That's money that he was giving away, didn't have cash access to. And you that's the other crazy thing. You actually have access to it right now. Yep. When a dealer's on reinsurance, it's three, four, five years before he actually takes the money and you actually have, has access. You have control. Yeah. You have control of it. Mm -hmm. Now you have control of the claims. You have control of the investment. You have control of the money. You now have control of pay, getting more people, growing your business. Flooring is what now? 12 to 16%. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So you know what I did? I took that money and I started buying cars with it. Then I started charging myself 12 to 16%. Yeah, you're just smart with your money. And you, you just keep, keep yeah. doing it. And it's crazy. It turns into like, I want to say an upward spiral of how much cash flow control and growth it just stimulates it's it's kind of interesting so we we came up the literally there's no program out there like this yeah. and it's now and when people partner with you it's not only what you guys do by going in and showing them where the money's at and then how you guys are going to retrieve it which 
is what you do, but also you plug in all the technology, you plug in the software. And um, how long does it take to get a dealer set up? Um, Realistically? Realistically? Yeah, if a guy's like, dude, I'm all in, I see the money, you know, yeah, I want that extra 100 grand a month, hypothetically, more or less. Well, I'll tell you this right now. We do our due diligence on our dealers, okay? okay? Because we will, first of all, Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. We need to make sure that that dealer is a good dealer. He's, he's loyal. He's honest to his customers. He has good financials. Now, he doesn't have to have, be multi-multi-millionaire. But more importantly, we want we to have make quality sure. dealers. Yeah, we have yeah. quality dealers because if, if my warranty contract name is on a company, mm -hmm. I don't want any other dealer being hurt, which is this is the other point I was saying is I've never had a dealer leave our program in four years. Never had one dealer stop selling our stuff. Well, love it. That's that's why it's been been awesome. Yeah. So um, it takes on average about a day. <laughs> that's how as soon as we have the financials and we we set them up. We can hook into their DMS. We can set them up on the platform. It's all customized to them. They have their own logo. We set up all their warranty program for them. Um, and it's not just service contracts. It's every product they sell from gap to paint protection to undercoat. Every single thing is now in-house. So any ancillary product. Any ancillary over. product. Instead of going to five different websites or two different menu systems, I really wanted to keep it all in-house for the dealer. So the idea was to make five contracts in two minutes. And you know, as, as like a finance manager, they're all over the place. And it's like, well, it's easier on your people. And at the end of the day, listen, and, and you notice he said upward spiral, right? Like when's the last time you heard that used in the marketplace, right? Like other than when COVID hit and everything spiked up and then, you know, you could land a 747 on car dealership lots because they didn't have any cars and everybody made more money. Now that the normal market's back in, almost all uh, dealerships are completely 100%, right? Back yeah. to where they were. We're watching or worse, or, or, which is or worse, and we're watching interest rates go high, old age units increase, old old age units from a long time ago get smacked, so dealers are taking massive wholesale losses. Salesmen aren't great at selling anymore, literally, okay? Um, we're cutting, we're trying to back in an expense from every area we can, in the last place that people will look or even not even look when they're at a dead end is this area that you help them with. And I think this is a time right now where it's like, dude, like, and I said this, if you have your eyes shut, don't be surprised when you get slapped, right? Like you got to keep your eyes open. You have to look. It's evolve or die. And how we've been killing it, you know, our company went to nine figures in three years and how we did it and really took over now is because we look at all these holes that we have and we're always thinking like, Look, let's stay, like, I always say stay out of the tunnel, right? So, like, everybody's in, in a dealership in this tunnel, and they're all working hard, right? You got to back out, dude. You got to get out of the crash site. And you got to be like, okay, dude, like, I can't change rates. I, I can't train my team. I've got managers that literally are defeated. And I'm not saying that they're not telling you that they are, but most of them are. They're defeated. They made more money last year than they ever made. And this year, their wives are seeing them bring home less checks or husbands, whoever it is. And they're like, what's going on? They're having to go back to work in more hours, make less money. And then they got the stress of the dealer saying, we got to freaking make money. And at the end of the day, you don't want them to break the law, do you? You don't want them to do something bad. No, but, 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 but they want to please the owners. They want to go hard. They want to, they want to take care of business. Nobody wants to fail right now. So to me, it's easy for the dealer to say, okay, hold on. Okay, I know what I can do with my team. Obviously, self-development with human capital and my team, making sure our cars are priced right, making sure our finance team's trained, make sure that we have everything. Let's look over here in this area. It seems like the last place people look, and why don't we look there first? Why, don't, why, why wouldn't you take the low-hanging fruit? Like if you walked up to a tree and there was just, why would you climb to the top of the tree? That's training your team. That's doing, that's what I do. Why, that's doing all that. That takes time. Dude, you plug into something like this, you start making money right now. Your company is the low hanging fruit. The stuff that's already going on, not only, not only does it simplify and get easier, but you make more money and you do it now without any change. That's crazy. That's like magically waving a wand and owning each one of your car for $5,000 less on your lot. Like, that'd be cool, right? 
But that shit doesn't exist. But this exists. That's why you got to open your eyes. That's why people got to have a different um, look on business right now. That's why the smart people are getting rich and the people that are inside of the tunnel are going broke. That's why you got to back out of the crash site. And especially as a dealer, that's why I said, if you're a salesman or a, a manager or a general manager, like, listen, if you guys want to, I'm not going to say pull the pressure off you because I think it's really healthy for you to have a lot of pressure on you, especially as, as high performers. Like we do well when our back's against a wall. But dude, cash is real. Money is real. This shit is not a joke. And right now, the dealers have taken really good care of a lot of companies for the last year or two. And right now, they need help. And right now, you know, if they've had your back, like, you need to have their back. This video needs to get in their hands. It's hey, I was going to ask you, I assume you were selling in 07, 08? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when the recession hit. Yeah. Or the housing deal, so yeah. Let me ask you your opinion. Did you like it or not like it at that point? I loved it. And I, I figured you were going to answer it that way. Okay, so tell me why you loved it. Well, number one, all the SUVs immediately went half price. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm, I'm going to tell everybody why I loved it. And by the way, I'll tell you a lot of different things. But I will tell you one of the reasons why I loved it. Me and my wife had about seven, 800 grand saved up at the time. Okay. All of the Tahoes, all the, all the 40,000, because they're about $40,000 rides, all the heavies, we'll call them all the heavies, all the V8s, all the trucks, everything, all the Toyota Tundras, Toyota Tundras bring all the dough. They got these crew max Tundras that were listed for 40 grand MSRP. Dude, they were dumping them at the auction for 20 grand. Me and my wife took our whole bank account and went and bought every one of them we could buy with all seven hundred grand. Wait, wait, wait. So you're telling six months, and I'm a I'm a car you, salesman. You spent money in the downtime. That's I'm that. trying to figure this out. Yeah, because that's what that's what people that are smart do. Okay, they well number one. Remember when COVID hit? Right when it started to hit, most people started laying off all their people. They started, dude. A lot of people that I know that were extremely successful went and bought a thousand cars when COVID hit, and everybody tripped. They bought them low. Then when it went up. They cashed out. And six months later, I got rich just because I went and bought all those heavies. Now, that was my personal decision. From a business decision, I was selling cars, okay, me and my wife. And it's funny because everybody was going, wah, wah, wah. Nobody can get approved. Everybody's got to put money down. And my deal is, is like, dude, nobody has to pay cash for anything. This is crazy. We can still leverage cars. Everybody that has a heavy... Okay, uh, a VA or bigger truck or car SU or an SUV is going to be wanting to trade it in because they can no longer afford to drive it. We're about to get rich. We just hit the lottery. So I sold every freaking car there was. I literally knew I was going to take in all their trade-ins for half of it. Now, most of the people came in, they were so upside down. They had to get HELOCs literally on their houses, which I went over and made a relationship with somebody across the street that was like, I can literally get the HELOC money on a house if somebody has any equity in it within a week. I have an appraiser. I can get it done and get it handled. So people would come in, they're 20 grand upside down. They couldn't put freaking $1,400 a month in gas. So you know what I did? I said, done. I got a deal, hypothetically speaking. If we have 14 grand of equity in your home, if you own it, this man will take care of it. I'll go ahead and write up the contract now. I'll put the car on hold. My general manager had saw me do it tons of times. They would get the cash, put it down. Deal's done. And there were 10 pounders left and right. My, my point is, is that you thrived because you had the cash flow. Right. Or, or I was resourceful, yeah. which is what reaching out to you is, is resourceful. Rich people are resourceful. Poor people aren't. People say, and I want to say this, people say, I can't shut your mouth. You don't want to, you don't want to make more money. Let's just be honest. You don't want to make more money. People don't want to make more money. They say they do, but they really don't because they say like, I can't. Or you don't know like what we're up against. Or you don't understand our market. Shut your mouth. You don't want to. Real leaders always will find a way. In, in, in a legal way. And because when I'm telling you, there's loopholes. There's ways of thinking. Not outside the box of your businesses. But on the edges of how can we operate in our company to move. If you're going to think like everyone else who's the same, you're going to get the same. That's average. You want to know why everybody's average? Because people conform, produce, and consume. They consume, they conform, and they produce. That's all they do. It's a cycle of shit. And they live in it. And that's why people aren't growing. That's why you got to evolve. And that's why, listen, I said that you're some of the five people you hang out with the most. Some of you right now, you're literally hanging out with people that are the wrong people. You're hanging out with people that are justifying where you're at, where you're at. You need to be around people that say, dude, listen to me. You're better than this and you should be farther than that. And if there was ever a better time to be great, it's when everyone's asleep. Now's the time to go back and check your insurance. Make sure they're giving you the best rate. 
Go through, dot your I's, cross your T's. Come on, man. Let's not be dumb. Let's not assume we have the best. Let's, let's make sure we do, right? Wouldn't that be stupid if you found out? It's kind of like, I always ask people, have, have you ever... Have you ever caught someone stealing from you or something? Yeah. And it really hurts. But then you look back and you realize there was probably a time that you should have double checked them early on and you just didn't. You, you didn't have to get stolen from. All you had to do was dot your I's and cross your T's. You guys right now, get this video to your, yourself as a dealer. If you're a dealer, independent franchise, you guys need to text the 801-251-6605. Just tell Micah what you're doing. That's it. Let's just have a five minute conversation with him. And if you can't help him, okay, or, or if you guys don't align, we love you. Have a blessed day. Let's move on. You can stay the same. It's, it's such a good point that you're saying, even talking about it within insurance. Um, and it, even, even when we say, even using the word steal is kind of is strong, but it's, it's realistic. But let's say willingly taken advantage of, you know, yeah, whatever you, you, you don't call. even realize how much advantage. And so like, if you're a salesman, if you're a sales manager, finance manager, owner, I would encourage you just, and, and it's very simple math, go to your controller, ask them, how much have we paid this company in 12 months? You yeah, and, and, and I, yeah, and I wasn't saying like, so like the company, people are stealing from you, but like if you've ever caught someone stealing, I had a, a guy who was stealing on the back lot from me a long time ago. He was wholesaling cars. You know how it is. Oh, yeah. Right? And they steal, right? Grease. Yeah, they just grease deals and they each get a little cut. And, you know, I, I just want to tell you this. I one day sent a wholesale buddy of mine to the back lot to try to grease his ass, to, to just make sure. Because, like, I knew this guy wasn't stealing from me. But I just want to know. And it made me sick to even test him. And he greased the guy. My point is, I should have done it a long time ago. But you had a loyalty and a relationship, and then all of a sudden... Well, that's what I was saying. Like, I just... I, the word assume was, like, I just want to say, like, let's not assume that we have the best deal. Let's not assume, you know, no, nobody's hurting you, but there's not a way to save more money. Let's just not assume, like, like, that's where you get your ass kicked. People that are smart in business, they double check everything. They make sure, and they do it consistently and often. Okay. So um, anyways, I just want to say a lot of people haven't changed insurance companies in 10 years well, because they, ha they haven't they even think checked. It's a well, they think it's a headache. And by the way, they're like, well, this guy's been with me or like, oh my God, how would they take this? Well, how are you taking it? Not making what you're worth. How are you taking it? Looking at your bank account and seeing the numbers are down. Is your warranty company calling you and uh, they're upset about it? No. Yeah. No. Quit thinking small. Okay, it's time to dream bigger. It's time to partner with people who want to see you earn more, make more, and have the cash flow to treat your customers better, your company better. You know, whether it's buying cars, use the cash freely, which we will need, right? As rates con rates continue to increase, which we've only seen them continually go up, dude. If rates stay high for another two years or three years, you're going to need this cash. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to tell you, it's just, it's just, it's just so many reasons to make a call. And that's why I try to tell my people, like, this channel, we created this channel, this podcast, to give people options, okay? To let salespeople, like, see another way of selling or a different style. To let managers see a different way of being a freaking leader, right? Because we're in a world that, right now that's starving for leaders. And how if they want to retain and, and hire the right people and, and make the right salespeople, that do they got to be better leaders, and then also for owners to also be like, hey, man, you know, like I need to plug into things that can help me be better and sharper. We have tons of owners that train on our channel. Well, uh, well let me give you an example. And this happened last week. So it, we had a, a sales manager, kind of what we're talking about, takes an influence, wants to show the owner more money. He calls us, tells us, OK, this is what my dealership is. We're able to take his inventory. We're able to take everything within it. We can see the loss ratio, how many claims, what the price point should be. And then we go back to him. And it, and it takes us about a day to do that. But we actually customize the information for a dealer. And we can sit there and say, in four years, this is how much money you have. In six months, this is how much money you have. And this is just based upon what you're doing right now. This isn't even... Yeah, no, no, changes. No, no changes. No changes. Right. And th there's not been one person that goes, is this for real? And then we can prove it to them. It, it's really interesting on how it works. But it's just like you were saying... Uh, in the downtimes, you need the leverage, you need the cash flow. Um, this is what helps dealers thrive because there's a lot of dealers that aren't on this program. Right. They're giving away money. And those are the dealers 
that fortunately for guys like me, but unfortunately for them, those are the guys that are going to hurt. Those are the guys going in a downward spiral. The guys that can go in an upward spiral and take advantage of now the opening market within them. It's kind of like you, the COVID criers, as I call them, the guys who are now crying about how it was two years ago. Those are the ones that need you more than anyone because they don't understand how easy it was two years ago. That's it. It spoiled everybody. It ruined it. It was was the worst thing that ever happened to our entire market. And people say it was the greatest thing. Yeah, what was going on. But then afterwards, everybody got lazy. And so you need to do two things. Number one, obviously, I, I, I believe and I think that all of you are working really hard and you're doing the right thing and you're grinding. And if you're doing that, that's called hard work. And then the other side is making smart moves and being smart. You got to be smart. You can't just work hard and not be smart. So I think that everybody watching this right now, we've explained what auto is. We've explained what Micah's company is doing. You can understand just from a perspective. He's blowing up. He's crushing it. And he's killing it. What I love is that you're not too big. Okay. I love that because a lot of people right now, they need attention to their stores. They need a little more help than their current company or any other company is willing to give them. And one of the things that you like to do with your team is grow, is grow cash flow, is to create more revenue for these stores, is to make sure that, you know, you are helping them win big. And to me, I'm always thinking like when I go to use somebody, um, I just got a new CPA. We're earning a lot of money. We got, we keep outgrowing CPAs, right? But I, I, I interviewed a couple of them and, and a couple of them just seemed to be too big. Like they're you don't big. have the customer service. My wife, when she wants to get on the phone with the CPA, she wants to get on the phone. She, three days later, shit ain't flying with her. And so like to me, like you seem like the kind of guy, like when, when, when we're needing help, like you're going to help people. And that's the reason why the Elliott Group has thrived so much because all these other big companies, everybody, they outgrew everybody. Right. So I just want to say, like, as you're growing massively, it seems like you're growing your team at the right pace. And obviously, you're always available. You love your company. You rep it. You wear it on your on your, on your, your shirt. You, you care a lot about it. And you want to see people win. You take it personal. And by the way, if any owner's watching this or if any owner gets this video, you know, like, does anybody else take your financials, you know, personal? No, it's probably just you. So reach out, text the number, the 801-251-6605. And then, Micah, any last thing you want to say? No, man, it's been great. And I, I do want to say, like, what you've talked about, I mean, thank you for being the best salesman I've ever heard. And I, and I'm I, just telling the truth. I know, I know. It, it was funny. When, when I introduced you to this, and, and in three minutes you got it, and then you spit back out kind of reselling me on my own, <laughs> I was just like, this guy's legit. And uh, just looking into you, I just really want to thank you for, you know, really getting to know you over the last while. It's been interesting. Evan has been awesome. Yeah, our team, they're great. And so to your point, like I text and talk with Evan every week and, uh, you know, we've established a great relationship. He he helps my dealership a ton as well. So well, it's cool when you meet somebody and they actually do what they say they're going to do. Just doesn't exist anymore. I was telling everybody on stage yesterday, I was in Dallas, I said, uh, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life and my hardest part of my life is keeping my word. I deal with so many people and I always keep my word. So as I've grown, when I was little, it was easy to keep my word. But now as I've gotten bigger, it's really hard to keep my word. Not because I don't want to, but because when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to freaking do it. I was going to ask you that. And, like, it, and it kills me not to do it. I can't even sleep at night. And my wife, she's like, Andy, we'll do anything except break our word. So I always think about that. Like, did I tell someone I was going to do something today? Like, did I say we were going to do something? Like, I'm always thinking. And I want you to know that, like, that's why our company's grown. And you have that same thing. And I just want to tell you that a lot of companies don't have that. They want to earn an account. They want to check it off and then go get another one. And they don't want to grow your current accounts. And what I see you as a type of person, whereas if you ever got to a point, regardless about money, that you had enough accounts and that you knew you could take care of what you had, you would call it, draw a line and say, we're done. I'll take care of my current accounts. I'll keep everybody happy. This is the way I'm going to roll. And people don't operate that way. They're like more, 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 more. And then boom. And it falls they, off. Exactly. Yeah. And and that's why, I mean, we haven't had a client leave yeah. is because we're very personalized in our service. Every dealer has their own claims manager. Every dealer has a point of contact, including me. My cell phone is, I mean, you can ask my wife. I do take calls and text take them messages. At 2 a.m. It's part of the game. Yeah. yeah. It's part of the game. But I was going to ask you that because I was, it was interesting because Evan showed me a picture a 
couple days ago, and it was like right when you were starting, and it looked like you guys were in a laundry room almost. And there's like you, Jackie, and there's like three other people, mm-hmm. and uh, it was just like how it all started. And then now you see it all in there. So and really, I, th- I you can tell me, but within the last what twelve to sixteen months, it's just like oh, everyone knows in the car industry who Andy Elliott is. Well, because everybody didn't need training. Well, right, but I mean, like, ha- do you feel like in twenty twenty three? Do you feel like that's changed you at all? Fame changed you? Anything like that? Hell no. Look, money magnifies who you are. Okay? If you're an asshole, when you get money, you're going to be the biggest asshole that anybody's ever seen. If you're a depressed person, when you make money, you're going to be the most depressed person with money that anybody's ever seen. I was happy when I was broke. Okay? I wasn't. I wasn't like, I wasn't proud of myself, but I was happy. I've always taken care of my family. I've always taken care of myself. I've always tried to figure out how to be number one. But now the market is just right for a guy like me that wants to be unique, make connections, stand out, and be different, has a different place in this market. And so I'm trying to tell anybody and everybody that the the rules have changed. Things that worked three years ago don't work today. But you're doing what people did three years ago and you're wondering why it's not working. It's because the rules have changed and no one told you. That's why. So I know that the next 10 years, right, they're going to be based off the greatest sales team in the history of time. Because if you don't sell something, you don't make money. Just so everybody's aware. If you want to get rich, sell something. I don't care what you sell. Just be very good at sales. Number two, be the best leader the world's ever seen. And be so good that your name isn't even leader. It's damn sure not boss. It's leader or mentor. Okay. And then number three, make sure that you understand technology and that you partner with people that want to go with you on your journey to make more and earn more. And some people are with you just for a portion of your life. It's like this. I had best friends growing up. They're my best friends, but they're my friends anymore. I outgrew them. I matured. How many of you right now have matured? Okay. And you're ready for some new friends. You're ready for some new connections. You're ready for some new relationships to take your business to the next level, to take your, your life to the next level. You, you got to outmature your competition. And that's what I did. I grew up and self-developed so hard and learned that people are sick and tired of being sick and tired of dealing with amateurs and freaking fakes and, and people that aren't pros. So I was like, well, if that's what the, if that's what the marketplace is, which who's, who pays us? The marketplace. If that's what they're sick of, dude, if I become this over here that they want to become, the marketplace will reward me. Now I'm getting freaking rewarded. <laughs> so it, it, anyways, it, it's common sense, but it's not so common anymore because everybody, I told you, they're getting civilized, they're conforming, and they're hanging around people who are whining and crying. So if this video has made it to your hands, and by the way, if you've made it this far in the video, you're top 1%, okay? So congratulations on that. But lastly, I'm gonna give you this number, 801-251-6605. You guys just text Micah and say, hey, Micah, I want a five-minute conversation. Look, if it doesn't work out, Cool. Love you. Love Micah. Y'all have a blessed day. What if it does? What if it does and it makes you hundreds of thousands of dollars? What if it does and there's a better way to do things? What if there's something you don't know? Never assume that you know everything because you don't. Okay. And then also the rule in life, especially as for business owners and for anybody that wants to be great is get in rooms with people doing bigger things than you. And I, I don't share many people on my channel. So if I share him with you, it's because you need to know him, okay? Relationships are the new currency. You want to make a lot of money? You got to make a couple new relationships. So maybe it's time to reach out. And don't make a decision. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to switch my stuff. No, just call him. See what it looks like. He'll paint a picture, show you the blueprint, give you the facts, and in the end, it's your decision. So love you, bro. Appreciate you, man. Kill it. You guys, reach out to them, and then we'll see you on the next podcast. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you, the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications, and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.